All right, we're here for a special Patreon presentation just for the patrons. Uh, we're talking Ant Man and the Wasp. Everybody with me, I've got my good friend Justin Logan. Justin, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. So you revealed before you started that you are just you're basically plastered right now. You're pretty wasted. Um, <laughs> So I didn't say that. It might be an interesting show. Okay, you, you didn't say that. You said you might have had a couple drinks, which is a little yes. bit different than what I said. Yeah. yeah um, but I like that because the, the loose uh, kind of blabbermouth Justin is the one I like the most, man. I like when you just like <laughs> blurt ridiculous things out about whatever we're talking about. So uh, all the well, ho Hopefully I can produce this time. We'll see. Yeah. You'll do fine. All right. So we've only seen this movie one time, both of us. We went and saw it together, and neither of us have, like, watched any reviews of it or anything. So that's all we have of it. We have, we have nothing else to draw upon. If we miss some stuff, which we might do, um, we apologize. But I, I, think, I think this is good. Like you said before we started, you know, seeing it once and not having a bunch of other people's opinions in our head – makes it more authentic right it's like no one else is influencing what we thought about this movie other than the fact that we knew going in that the critics didn't really like it and the audience thought it was pretty good so that was our only exposure to like outside influences so this is the 31st mcu film is that not insane yeah, that is insane. But if you remember back in Iron Man, within the first couple of minutes, they made reference to MySpace. So, I mean, it's been a minute. Yes, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a bunch of old references. And if you look at, like, the phones they're using and stuff like that back in the earlier film, it's like, oh, yeah, this stuff's kind of dated. But it still works. I've recently yeah. done a, a rewatch of, of Iron Man and Incredible Hulk, and they both still really hold up. So, you mean now, until they whip out that phone and start T9ing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, this is the the third Ant Man film. Now, what did you what did you think of the first two? Myself, I was a big fan of the first one. Like, second one is all right. The first one, though, I thought was like it was pretty top tier. I I loved it. Yeah. So, so the the first one and the one the supporting cast was sorely missed. We didn't have Luis. We didn't have like the Russian guy. We didn't have the, we didn't have T. Oh, yeah. I, I miss those guys. That, that was like part of the thing, you know, that was the yeah. charm of Ant-Man. Yeah. This movie actually did. It felt a lot different than both of the first two films. Like it, it's usually a much smaller story. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a little more like, Scott Lang stories, Ant Man stories, it, ironic as it is, are usually much smaller stories, right? Like uh, more localized. Like yeah. a heist. The first one's a heist movie. Um, uh, the second one, I don't know. It's just more personal. They're trying to rescue Janet uh, from the quantum realm, and but this was like wildly different than the other films. It was like a much more epic set piece. Like they go to a completely different world. Uh, it's all, all CGI in this film, which you didn't have as much of in the first two films other than like the, the shrinking and growing. But you didn't have a lot of like CGI backgrounds and stuff like that. So what did you think about that just overall, just the difference in like the look and feel of Quantumania compared to the, the first two Ant-Man films? So they really went above and beyond to try to make it uh, like, hey, guys, we're telling you this is the next big thing. Like. It's yeah. all this going forward. Like, it's it's just insane. But it's almost felt like we're crossing the realm of, hey, normies, it's all pure comic book nerd shit now. And I think that might be where sort some of the disconnect is. Um, <clears throat> the endearing part was the comedy and the cast. And they, that took a back seat now. And it's more, you know, comic book. And, uh, you know, you need to know the lore. You have to care about modok a bit even though that was one of the worst parts but um yeah, yeah I, th I think that that was the disconnect the supporting cast 
you know, that was my biggest gripe, honestly. So do, do you think that's why the, the critic score was so low? Just because, like, the critics are more normies compared to the, 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 the wider audience that's seeing it that are a lot of MCU, like, diehard fans that are on there rating it? Yeah, I think it's just, it feels like you're being bombarded with a lot of shit recently, you know, with the whole yeah. Thor thing and, like, oh, hey, here's Eternity and Eternity can bring people back. And it, it's just, it's getting fucking wild. So it's, like, it's yeah. really hard to hang on to it if you're not familiar with any of this shit. You know, the whole Infinity Stones thing was to figure out purple guy needs these rocks and purple guy will fuck you up. But this is a yeah. little harder to to, you know, stick to. Yeah, it's definitely gone more and more off the rails. And I, I imagine that's how, like, a, a lot of fan, like, general fans of, like, sci-fi stuff feel when they go see, like, a really crazy sci-fi film. And they're like, they're, they're just not into it. They're like, I don't get it. And I think it's that same type of thing. It's like, I don't know what's happening here. It's, like, becoming too complicated or too complex, which seems, seems silly for, you know, a, a movie kind of aimed at, I don't know what teenagers, maybe young teens, uh, but it's all come on. It, it's aimed at us too, right? It, it's aimed at like the middle aged crowd almost as much as it's aimed at the kids because it, you know, they're they're drawing on all this like old like seventies, eighties, nineties comic book stories, and these characters are are what people our age and older grew up with. Like I, I didn't even know anything about Ant Man before watching the first Ant-Man film. I never read Ant-Man comics or Avengers comics that featured Ant-Man. So, you know, I, I feel like it's yeah. almost just as much for yeah. uh, the old people. Yeah, uh, I never read any of, like, the Golden Age comics. Like, all of my yeah. comics were the uh, ridiculous 90s shit where it was just over the top and extreme, and that was that was my yeah. welcoming into it. So, you know, that's probably why, you know, we're both – real big into x-men because of you know animated series and shit that was like that was yep. our thing but the classic yeah. stuff yeah we i'm guessing you missed all of that too <laughs> yeah i think you know that maybe that's why we're not but I, I will tell you i'm not as crazy pumped for every film as i was when we were in the midst of like phase three and going right towards uh infinity war like that was the peak of excitement right and it remains to be seen if we're going to feel that way again when we get close to King Dynasty and, and Secret Wars especially. But I, I don't know. I don't know if the hype will ever be quite the same. But I have hope. I have hope because I think it's going to lead to X-Men. It's going to lead to some brand new storytelling and like whatever they're going to call it, Phase 7, 8, and 9. I think it's going to be X-Men heavy. It's going to be all X-Men and Fantastic Four. I think the Avengers are going to take a back seat. Um, but maybe that's why we are still kind of hanging on or some people are falling off because we were in that, that nineties extreme really out there storytelling with, you know, a lot of different timelines and people traveling through time and stuff like that. Maybe that's why we're yeah. able to still hang on. Cause like that's, that was our wheelhouse. Like we love that type of stuff. Yeah. My favorite movie is a, is a time travel movie. Like anything with time travel i love it so yeah you know i'm Same. down for it i just I'm, I'm afraid we're gonna lose some of the general audience yeah oh and, and that that kind of sucks because i mean that's what fuels the like yeah the geeks and the the, the comic cons and, and everything like there's there is a large part of this audience that could carry the franchise but i don't think without the normies i don't think it keeps doing the box office numbers that it was and i don't think that it, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. Like, if it just goes straight yeah. nerd, straight geek world, is that enough? Is that fandom enough to carry the franchise, or do they need the the general audience? I, I think they need the general audience. So, yeah, they, they definitely do. We wait. You know, obviously, you got to wait for the post credits. Those post credits last three and a half fucking hours. Like, there's a lot of people. <laughs> involved yes. in making these things and like without the general public like you need 100 million at least opening weekend and then you need to make like four to six hundred million total like for something yeah. like this it's got to pull insane numbers 
Yeah, and and this one did. It did. It actually made the most of all the Ant Man films with all the all the shit talk about it. Um, it it did actually do numbers higher than Ant Man one or two. So, and and you gotta you gotta think the subject matter for that one. I think I don't think if it wasn't the movie that's introducing the main villain for the rest of the phase five and six, I don't think it does the numbers that it did. Um, but it made like 104 million open opening weekend, which is, it still is number one. And like I said, above what, even, um, the second Ant-Man film, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was between, it was between infinity war, right? No, wait, when did that, that came out between, Yeah, it was between infinity war and uh, yeah. Right, so that was kind of hyped because of that. Like, well, what, what are they going to show that has to do with what might lead to what's going to happen, like, uh, uh, with, with Thanos? And this one still did more than that. So, and I, and I do think it's the Jonathan Majors Kang that, that brought the audience in. I think people were hyped for that. Because um, otherwise, I don't think, while I love Paul Rudd and I love the Ant-Man stories that we've had so far, I don't think Ant-Man is top of the heap for most people that love these MCU films. I think they're kind of like lower level film. Yeah, no, honestly, I think Ant-Man works better as a street level character. I, I like him a lot better like that. It, 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 like yeah. I'm worried about like Daredevil and in a, uh-huh. you know, an end game type movie. That doesn't make sense. I like him with street level stories. Yeah. Yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering if a lot of that uh, if a lot of these series that we've had for the past two years are going to remain mostly series, you know, like they might show up here or there in the films, but you're not going to get major storylines with like She-Hulk or Daredevil, or I think most of that's going to take place on the small screen because I don't know. It, it, it does feel kind of separate, doesn't it? Like it doesn't feel as, as grand. It doesn't feel as, um, otherworldly as some of these big films do like i don't know where any of those street level characters from the series we've gotten so far like hawkeye uh, other than loki i don't feel any of those characters fit very well into uh, like if they tried to throw them into this movie like how would that even work yeah Yeah, that definitely wouldn't work and and i hope blade is the same way Um, i mean it can do some crazy shit but it needs to go in a different direction like like, I love that Werewolf by Night. Like, it yes. needs to be just in that. Like, just fucking weird monster yeah. shit. Like, stay on that side. Hey, we don't need everything combined. I agree. And, and I used to not feel that way. I wanted everything to be connected. I thought it would be cool. You did, too. You, even you were like... I, and, and it's great that it's loosely connected. Yeah. Because it's still connected. It's still part of the, the giant story that they've been telling. But... Yeah, I don't really need yeah. to see all of this stuff in the movies. I remember, uh, like, okay, when the Netflix series were coming out, and you were like, well, is it connected to the MCU? Do they allude to it being connected? I'm like, uh, a little bit, but not really. You're like, well, then I'm not interested, right? Like, You were like, connected or not at all? Like, I'm not even going to watch it. Well, and it's now, because I had just seen the payoff where it was like all these fucking portals. I was like, this is the most epic shit I've ever seen. I, I yes. just want to get back to this. You know, that's all I wanted. But now, I mean, it's kind of, it's getting weirder. And it's like, now I don't really need it. Now there's multiple timelines and different multiverses. And it's like, it's too yes. much to connect now. It doesn't even make sense. So let's just, now you can take separate paths because it all exists. So that's fine. Yeah. And, and I dig it too, because you could always explain it away. If you're like, if you're like, well, how come Daredevil never shows up in whatever, whatever's coming up, you know, like what, what in Daredevil or Spider-Man or uh, Hawkeye or any of these characters, Kate Bishop show up, She-Hulk. Why didn't they show up in, in this film or that film? Well, there's always the, the fallback of like, well, maybe that's a different universe. I mean, at this point, anything could, every show almost, besides the one we've seen connect could be on different timelines. We have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, I, I hope, hope they do the thing. Hope, hope they end this whole fucking MCU 
I hope they end it with Battle World. Like, like when they finish up the MCU, like final film. Uh, yeah, they can finish it and like start fresh and over after that. Like, I don't know how many years that is, but yeah, yeah, that'd be fucking cool. Okay. okay. Well, we've talked a lot about the, the the greater world and and what we think about like where we're at right now with this movie, but we haven't dove into the movie very much, so. Let's jump into it. Um, the story here is Cassie Lang is fooling around with the quantum realm. She's trying to figure out a way to map the quantum realm so that they could travel down there and keep track of the people that they send down when they go. They're sending a signal down there. So, first off, what did you think of like the older Cassie Lang here compared to... Okay, so it, it's going to sound like a real asshole comment. This Cassie yeah. Lang... She seems like yep. a fucking idiot in real life. Like, I feel uh-huh. like she's dumb as shit. And her playing a genius. And it's just convenient that everyone's a fucking genius. I don't like the fact that yeah, she's yeah, yeah. so intelligent. She can play with the quantum realm as a teenager or however fucking old she is. I don't yep. like it. It wasn't believable. No. No. No, you're right. Yeah, absolutely right. I, I completely agree. Because even Scott Lang doesn't really know shit. You know, he's not the guy that knows about all the tech and knows about he's just a guy who figured like they teach him how to do everything, teach him how to use the suit, teach him how to communicate with the ants, like everything, because he had nothing to do with tech. He was a thief. Right. Like that's yeah, that's what that's what he did. He's he's an ex-con who was a a, a notable thief. And that's it. And he, he wasn't in any way brilliant. There's no reason. Like, I could see her interest in all this stuff because of all the things that happened when she was young and that her dad did all these crazy things and and this shrinking tech and whatnot. But for her to be so involved and, like, then be on the level with um, Hank Pym and yeah. Janet Van Dyne, and, and, and like, it, it's really unbelievable that she would get to that level, have that level of intelligence, or, yeah. I, I don't know, it seems like way, way too much of a stretch. And Hank Pym isn't even her like her actual grandpa. It's like no. you're a regular you're a regular fucking person. You should be good at scams and thievery, maybe, maybe some of that yep. passed on. But yep. otherwise you're an average person with normal fucking teenage interests. Like what the hell's happening here? Yeah. And I could almost get it if she if we if we met her a little older and she's like 30 years old, right? And she has went to school for this for her whole life because she was so uh, enthralled by all this technology that influenced her youth and was all around her and stuff and her dad was very involved in like i could see her taking an interest in it's like it's like someone becoming a a cancer researcher or something because one of their parents died from cancer when they were young or something like it makes sense if she then pursued a career where she got really into that but no how old is she here We've got yeah, a five-year I, I, I don't know if she's 25. Yeah, I don't know if she's 25 or fucking 19 or 28. Right. I have no idea how old this kid is. I don't know. I, I think teen. I, I think that – I don't think she would be out of high school, honestly, because I think she was like nine or so. How old did she say she was? Six years old when, when Yellow Jacket did the thing? Yeah. Right? And then – so that was her encounter. She was six. That was 2015. Okay. We're in the 2025 world well, no, right now? No, we're like 2026 now at least because it was Christmas, okay. Hawkeye 2025. It's <laughs> okay. after that. So it's got to be like 2026 now. Okay. All right. 2026. So 10 years later, she'd only be 16 years old, 17 years old, right? 15, 16, 17. And, and the a- actress is like, what, 20-something? Yeah, but they always do that. Yeah. I mean, they, I you know, they always do that. And I... If nothing else, it's for like being able to work actors whenever they want rather than. Oh, yeah. Damn labor you know. laws. <laughs> yeah. God, what's wrong with this country? So <laughs> I think um, I, I agree with you 100 percent. I wasn't a fan of, of this Cassie Lang and I didn't find her believable in any way whatsoever. And I think they could have told this story. Not using Cassie. Like, it could have been someone, some other stand-in, you know. Uh, I, I get why they wanted her involved, but she could have just been there and gotten sucked in, you know, for the but emotional you, pull. For, 
You, you know what would have been a million times fucking better? And I know this is going to sound stupid as shit, but it would have fixed this fucking movie. If you'd have had Luis in her yeah. spot, and Luis was very interested, like, like he gets real into shit, and all he does wow. is bother Hank Pym and want to fucking know more and more, and Luis fucked up and did this. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Except it was a breakthrough. Like, she did do something correctly. It was just that she made the mistake, not knowing how dangerous the quantum realm was, that... You know they would they would pick up on her signal and suck her down there. So, but anyway, that's so that's the opening of the movie. They get sucked down in there because of this signal she's sending down there. They're like, oh, there's some people up there trying to communicate. Let's bring them on down. Like the Kang wants to get out of the quantum realm, and uh, we don't see Kang for the first like 45 minutes of the movie. Like they they allude to him, they talk about how terrible and scary he is, but we don't actually see any Kang story really until a while into it. Um, what did you think of the quantum realm when they got there? Like, I had a feeling going in, like, when I first started seeing all these weird-ass characters show up, this person you had to drink part of his fluid, like, all that craziness. I had a feeling you would really dig that kind of thing. Yeah, it's like they did the Star Wars cantina and made a fucking movie out of it. Yes, it did. It, it had serious Star Wars vibes. Even, like, the... Um, it was like a mix of, like... Uh, Mad Max world with like, uh, yeah, Star Wars. Like it felt very Star Wars. The, the way people were dressing, like it was this rebel, this band of rebels against this big imperial Kang had a lot of Star Wars feels in it. But what did you think about just the wackiness of like all these ridiculous characters that the guy with the light for a head who could shoot things like Cyclops and that giant beast, like that giant sun that came in that was actually a living organism. And then uh, they, and then those little things that, that the Bill Murray was eating. And then when it got big, it, it like went after him. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the wackiness of it. Like they definitely took their shot on all that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm glad they didn't try to explain any backstories, really. He had like a shallow backstory of like the warrior woman, which eh, yeah. it was OK. I'm glad they kept it sort of surface level just because it, it didn't drag yeah. on she's forever with the movie. <laughs> that yeah, she was woman, actually fucking huge. That, that warrior woman was so. Yeah, I was like, damn, I'm going to be <laughs> built like that lady. That's my goal. Um <laughs> But yeah, so that was that was the setup. They, they get down there and they realize, and like Janet has to kind of reveal what the, the story um, after they run into all these rebels and stuff, and meet Bill Murray and all that. And like find out that oh, he's actually working for Kang now because he's kind of a bitch. He's a traitor, um, and it's it's the battle of like the the rebels against the Imperial force, Kang's Imperial army, and then we get introduced to Kang. Like, we see Janet finally tells the story, like, this is how I encountered him. Like, I was already down here. He was banished down here, shot down here in the ship, and they give the whole backstory on Kang, and that's when we really get into, uh, like, the Kang storyline of it. What did you think of the origin of this Kang? Like, how he got down there and all that? Um, I'm thinking we're probably going to see more of this from the opposite end. I think they're going to play with time a whole lot. And we'll probably have a movie yeah. at some point where there's a Kang in that movie. And at the end of that movie, that Kang is sent to the quantum realm. And you're like, fuck, it's a circle. Like, it's probably going to be like a, you know, full circle moment for the viewer, too. Yeah. And it would be cool if it, it was, like, not revealed, right? Like, you, you don't realize it's the same Kang until that happens. Yeah. Like, he's just different enough or something like i don't know what they would do to do that to really disguise that but i think that would be awesome if they could if they could keep that like a secret till the end and then it's like a big reveal like oh my god it's the, it's that one um I, i'm wondering if you know not to jump too far ahead but like i'm wondering if, if he's still alive like what exactly yeah. happened to him at the end of this movie I, i'm not sure that he died he, he's now a fucking an even smaller Modoc Kang. Oh God. 
Yeah, let's let's talk about Modoc because actually, I think right before we get that backstory, we get that we get, or, or maybe around the same time, Modoc shows up and it's revealed to be Darren. <laughs> I was this was appalling. I, I didn't like this. I yeah, I'm, I'm okay with them trying to take their shot, do Modoc, and really give like some comic book nerds like fan service, but. Why did they make it Darren? And why did they keep his head the same size that it was in the first movie? It looked, it didn't work. Like it didn't, it didn't, uh, it looked like a projection. It didn't look like, I don't know. It looked yeah. really silly, dude. It, it, like it wasn't even like anywhere near like uncanny Valley. Like that could be a human. No, that's just dumb. Like, yeah, I, yes. I could have drawn dumb. it on a piece of paper and it just been the same thing. You'd be like, yeah, it also looks shitty. Yeah. It looked like a, a, a coloring book. Like they got that image you would find in a coloring book of of, of Modoc. I don't, I don't know, man. I, they could have left Modoc completely out of this thing. And and it's like you know they they really thought they were patting themselves on the back, like, dude, what if it was fucking Darren and he didn't die? And it's like, <laughs> dude, why didn't you just CGI the whole goddamn thing and do a good job and use the yeah. voice, of, you know, Patton Oswalt like you fucking should have? <laughs> yeah. No, that would have been cool. Or look. You can make it Darren, but just don't make it his actual regular sized face popping out of the CGI body. I, why the hell would they do yeah, that? Should have been it like full so robot. Stupid. It's just his brain. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They should have played with it the way that they did um, with um, in, in Captain America: Winter Soldier when they had what? What was his name? The scientist that that was now a computer program. Oh yeah, uh, what Zol? His name's not Zolo. It was not Zool. There is only Zool. <laughs> there is no Darren. There is only Zool. No, he's really depressed, and his name is Zoloft, I think. Oh yeah, Zoloft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but I I think that would have been a much smarter move to make him like some sort of AI thing, or something. Like they could have yeah. even kept Darren as the guy, but like. You know, give him a fake, give him a mutated face. Give him, like, don't use the actor's face. That looks so stupid. And I, I think this movie would have been better for him not being in it at all. Even Modoc not being in it. And, and it wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't bad until they reveal, revealed Darren's face. His little mask was yeah. okay. It's so. just, I, I hate it. I feel like with this and with Love and Thunder, it's like, like and I understand it's an Ant Man film, but fuck, man, they lean real hard into comedy where there just isn't any sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I will say though, one thing I really appreciated about this, um, and and I, I I feel like we're dogging it really hard, but I don't think either of us hated it. Um, it was it was much yeah. better than Love and Thunder for sure. And yeah, I, like I enjoyed the film overall. I don't think it's top tier. I think it's a, a middle of the pack film. Um. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it's an Iron Man 2, not an Iron Man 3, so it's okay. Right. So, yeah, just don't think that we're completely dogging it. Uh, we'll, we'll get to some good parts. And, and I, you know, obviously the best part of the film was Kang. But the thing that I appreciated so much about it is that they didn't make Kang silly ever. He didn't have quippy jokes. You know, like they kept him serious. Every line that I can remember in the film, like, was serious. There was no moments of him, of, like, levity or moments of him with some quippy, snappy comeback that's funny or supposed to be funny. So I did appreciate that they at least kept him really serious. Because we, we're going to see a lot more of him. And I, I don't want to have these thoughts of, like, you want to have a silly version. But this wasn't the one. Like, he's supposed to be foreboding, yeah. and I think they, they pulled that off really well. Yeah, the, the only silly Kang part was that fucking post-credit, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, another thing I could have done without completely. And I hope they don't lean too hard into, like... I know they're going to do, obviously, that, like, the Kang Dynasty, but, like... It looked really silly. It, it looked like a, a football team hyping itself up. It was really weird. And... Yeah, I just thought it took away some of the seriousness of Kang. It really did. I'm yeah, glad if, they didn't if I, if I see that. people, yeah, if they're fighting like surf Nazi Kang and fucking, you know, mine yes. Kang and uh, no, right. 
yeah, I don't, I, I have no need or want for that. I like this version of King, the Conqueror, that we got in this film. Um, and I hope it's like not the last we see of him, like because they they made some. Um, they alluded to the fact that he's. It, it was kind of weird. So you remember in Loki, he who remains like alluded to the fact that there, there was like much worse Kangs out there, really scary Kangs who are not like him. And I feel like this was supposed to be one of those scary Kangs, but then. Yeah. They kind of made you believe in the end, like, well, actually, they banished this Kang. What about, I mean, like, there has to be a bunch of terrible Kangs left within the the Kang dynasty, right? Like, there has to be, and this is the one they, th- I don't know. It, it, it was almost like them banishing this Kang saved them. He was the cause of all the multiversal wars and all that. It's like then what do we have to fear now that he's gone? There must be more scary ones, I guess. I'm a little confused yeah. by, by the Kang situation. Maybe it's like uh, he's the one that uh, stopped them from con- conquering the multiverse, so they got rid of him, and then in order to like beat the Kang dynasty, they got to bring back that Kang, and I, I don't fucking know, man. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 and he... he he warned too that like there were worse kings. I think he said something along those lines. Like, yeah, so, he said everyone's gonna die if, he, if he's gone. Right. So not only he who remains said that, but King the Conqueror said that. Like, I'm really confused. I, I don't know if there's just much more diabolical kings to come, or if this guy's just like a master manipulator. And, and he's the guy that's re- he really is the bad guy. And like they need to bring him back to be the main villain going forward at some point. Or, like you said, they bring him back to stop even worse Kang somehow. But that's I think that's what this movie's meant to do. I think it, I think we're supposed to get this introduction and get that silly post credit scene. And you're supposed to think like this is there are endless Kangs out there. This was just one of them. He was pretty fucking scary. Um so imagine what else is out there. But they made it seem like this was the worst one, and that's why he was banished. So, but yeah. I'm pretty confused. I don't, I don't know what the hell they're going to do in the next couple years to make him the main villain again by the end. Uh, so so if, if every... Or just like Wanda? Because all Wanda again. variants look like Wanda. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there going to... And when they've shown other things, like when they showed that probability storm, where there's a bunch of different Scots, they all look like Scott. Well, I think the probability storm is just like, the, it's only within this localized zone. So it's like, yeah, it's only this Scott it... if he moved. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't think, those are really alive either. I think it's just like, that's what Scott's experiencing. I don't think like everyone's like, look at all those Scots. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole fucking like, oh, pile of Scots. Which one's the real Scott? I hope it wasn't the spaghetti Scott. <laughs> Interesting that how Marvel the, keeps going back to that though, right? Yeah, that's the second spaghetti person in like in a year. That's fucking. That's way more spaghetti people than I thought we'd ever get. Yeah, but remember Mantis in Infinity War? She became like a slinky. They really like this. Oh, like, yeah. Well, she, blend of noodles. She, she ribboned. She ribboned. She didn't spaghetti. Oh, uh, yeah. It was more ribbon, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Bill Murray was in this. I thought he was going to have much more of a part in this film than he did. He was there and gone. Yeah. Which is fine, I guess. It's not. I didn't expect like Bill Murray to be uh, uh, someone I really cared about as a character in this film, but good to see him. I, I guess did. that was that was probably thirty million dollars worth of Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I don't. I don't want to miss stuff. I feel like we're talking all around this stuff, but um, what? 
what did you think of that like final act? I thought that, that it was going to end really like I thought it was going to be like a sad ending. I thought it was going to be like a or a up in the air like this villain is loose ending. I thought he was going to get out. Um, he was beating the hell out of Scott, and I really thought that was going to go somewhere. Like I don't know if he was going to kill Scott, but I thought he was maybe going to trap him down there, and then he escapes or something. It, it kind of worked out a little too happy for me. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that she's like, hey, I'm just going to open up a portal again, even though it just got destroyed. Here's another portal. Come on out. Yeah, yeah, that was way too easy. It's way too convenient. Um, and I just like, yeah, I was hoping the threat of Kang would loom large when this movie was over. And I guess they tried to do that by, by showing all the other Kang. And not actually showing this king die, which is like a a trope that they do. Like whenever you don't see the death of someone, most of the time they're alive. Yeah. So and I just don't like the idea that Ant Man defeated Kang. Like that's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I I really I, I, I think the ending could have been better if it ended on a cliffhanger where Scott was stuck down there, um, Kang got out, and then the movie just ended. We had no idea. And then that second post credit scene was fantastic. The Loki one. Yeah. I thought that was great. I, I really hated that first one. But the second one was like, that's all we needed. When the thing is, like, you'd almost want to say, oh, what? Is this the first Loki variant? But it's it can't be because you also have that fucking Pharaoh. So it's like. Yep. You'll never know which one was the first one because they can go everywhere. Right. And was there a first one? Like, you know, can't in this world yeah. of, of, of I, I, multiverse, is there a first? It's like the chicken or the egg thing. It's like, I, I don't know. I, I still don't know what's going on with the multiverse, really. Like, was there always a multiverse and then it got uh, chiseled down to one, you know? And then broke back open, or was there one universe that exploded into a whole bunch, then got put back into one, and now is exploded back open? I don't really know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we're going to know. I don't know if they're going to go deep enough for us to completely understand everything. Marvel likes to do that, like give us all these stories, not give us every detail. Yeah, if we're going to explore that more, it's going to be in the next Doctor Strange. Now they got like Clea and shit. I think that's. That's more suited for that. Yeah, they can definitely dive deeper into, like, the origin of the multiverse. And I'd like to know. I'd like to know that. Like, because Loki did a pretty good job of explaining it, but I'm still unsure about that. Like, what came first? The fact that there was a multiverse and they had to end that shit? Or the fact that there was one universe and something split it into a bunch? We could really use a... um... What the fuck was that called? Um, a, a what if series? Um, yeah. That, with at least a couple episodes that really deal with Kang shit. That'd be fucking cool. Oh, you know what? They might because there is a what if season two coming. Yeah, that would really be an easy way to do it. Yeah. And that, you know, remember what they did in the first uh, series is like basically took all the movies from the past 10 years and, and dove into what if stories about those. Now they could do that with you know, these phases, they could go into phase four and five and dig deep into those. So that, that deals with the multiverse. So that, that'd be cool. They could do like a, what if, um, Sylvie didn't kill he who remains or something, you know what I mean? Like, and that, that could tell us more about how the multiverse works and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I know everyone, like, the, the popular thing right now is to be like, oh, the MCU's, like, it's just not the same. And it's not. It's not the same. I have hopes that it might reach huge popularity again when they do introduce X-Men. And, or maybe with the end of these Phase 5 and 6, it'll just blow up again. But I'm still really into it. I, I don't care that it's not exactly what it was before. I'm still like yeah. excited to continue on and get more 
the multiverse is what you and I talked about years ago before they even set in stone that they were going to do it. Yeah. Uh, dude, I've just been looking forward to the day when there's a new fucking X-Men movie coming out. Like, I've been waiting on that yeah. forever now. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Since before the other ones ended, right? It's yeah. like, yeah. we're like, man, can, can, can uh, Disney please just buy this up so we can get them in the same universe and give us... I don't know. If they could give us X-Men stories on the level of Phase 1 of the MCU or Phase 1 and 2 of the MCU... I don't know. It would, it would, it would uh, I think, I just, I don't know. I just think it would be so amazing to like really outdo the Fox X-Men films. And the first, I, I didn't say the first two X-Men films, I still think are pretty awesome. Like I'll go back and watch them now and they're good. And then, um, you know, two of the Wolverine films I feel like are really good. Uh, Days of Future Past was really good. So like there were some great movies in there. But if they can outdo even those, that's what I'm really looking forward to. If they can do it on the level, like it's weird because in the '90s, X-Men was like almost mainstream, right? '90s and early 2000s. Once the the cartoon led into them having a film, X-Men was the most popular comic from like 1975 until the 2000s. Like no one cared about Avengers, and so. If they can capitalize on that kind of popularity and nostalgia of like our childhood, I feel like it could be just as big as the first couple phases of the MCU. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, there's always the hope that we're going to get there. It's just, you know, you have to sort of approach it like a Browns fan right now. Like, oh, we're in a rebuilding phase, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. hopefully eventually. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I hold out hope. That's I guess that's what I'm saying is like, yes, phase four was not the strongest phase of the MCU. It, it might have been the weakest. But if you go back, even like phase one, there were some stinkers in there. Like, it, it wasn't all badass like like the first Thor the second Thor was worse than the first Thor I feel like it, it wasn't as as glorious as people made it out to be starting out and this is like a phase one all over again so I don't you know it wasn't super connected in the first phase it was just like let's tell this guy's story now let's tell this guy's story they didn't tie it together until Avengers so and then that's when they got really serious about combining all the stories together so i'm not i still hold out hope that the, even these are going to end in glorious fashion with with the king dynasty and secret wars most of all it's like i think that has a lot to uh to live up to like people have been for years been saying they should do a, a secret wars so i'm I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm sure it'll be wildly different than the comic book version, much like Civil War and Winter Soldier. Like they did, they changed a lot of things, but they still made excellent films. So I have I have high hopes for the end of these phases, and I'm willing to to sit through some like, you know, B-rated movies to get there. I, I'm okay with that. Plenty of the MCU were C's and B's along the way. Yeah, it's just uh, I'm feeling at this point we're kind of due for a Winter Soldier style movie. We're kind of fucking due. Yeah, like Falcon right. and Winter Soldier did a little bit of that. They had moments where it felt a little bit like, oh yeah, I missed this. We need a fucking yeah. movie like that now. You know where I'm at with it is that I I think that movie is probably going to be Captain America: New World Order, which I don't think comes out till 24. Um. But I have high hopes for that. I think it is the Captain America franchise, and they do a lot of that stuff, and it's grounded characters, which is my favorite part of the MCU. And that and and just the, the more ground-level characters in the series, I, I feel like if they could put out some fantastic series, uh, they can redeem their series. And, and I've enjoyed all the series, to be honest. But I do know I can see the overall fandom, like, like some of the series less and less. She-Hulk, Ms. Marvel, um, things like that. But I feel like Hawkeye was strong. WandaVision was strong. 
like Loki was really strong. Like I, I feel like it's we're due for some good series too, and I think Daredevil might bring that with an epic eighteen episode season coming. So a lot of stuff still to look forward to. Like I'm not. That's why even when I saw Thor: Love and Thunder, I wasn't like, oh, MCU's done, man. They're toast." <laughs> I was just like, well, okay, a stinker, whatever. It, and you know, I think it would take five massive flops in a row to end them. Like, it would have to really fucking suck bad to end this. Yeah. There's a and lot it's of so momentum. Subjective. It's so fucking subjective, too, because I I think I'm one of the only people on Earth that, who, like, really enjoyed Eternals. I don't know why. Like, everyone hates it. And maybe it's the disconnected part and, like, how do they fit in and what have you, but... I don't know. I thought it was fun to, to do something different, man. Like, not tell a, a story of any characters we already know. Um, Blade is another thing I'm super looking forward to. So that could be, you know, yeah. you said we're due. Like, it could be Captain America. Hey, who knows, man? Maybe the Marvels will surprise them. Secret Invasion is coming next. I oh, hope yeah. That I forgot, forgot you know, that was that, even a thing. Yeah. Uh, the Mandalorian starts next week. So I'm guessing, I don't know, they've run they've run both Star Wars and Marvel shows at the same time before. I don't know if they'll do it, though. They might hmm. wait till Mandalorian's over, but that's only eight weeks. So I think by beginning of May, I think we're going to get Secret Invasion. And it looks awesome. So I'm hoping, I got high hopes for that series. Get us back into like espionage, like government secret shit going on. I love that sort of stuff. So that that one, like all that stuff I've mentioned just now, like I feel like could be really high points going forward. And I have hopes for that. MCU really, really blew up in phase two. Like phase two and phase three is like when they started getting really good. You started getting Winter Soldier and then you... In phase three, you've got uh, Civil War, and you've got, uh, you know, everything leading up to Infinity War and Endgame. I feel like people were just, you know, a little impatient. But it, it, you're right. Yeah. We're in a rebuilding phase. <laughs> trying to build a I'm team, that's you, all. The Browns are going to go to the Super Bowl at some point. We just got to have hope. <laughs> yes, at some <laughs> point, they are going to go to the Super Bowl. It's inevitable. All right, so overall, with and I'm sure we missed some shit. Like, if you can think of anything about Quantumania that uh, that you think is like we really should mention before we we wrap it up, please do because I I don't want to miss key things. I know people are going to be like, dude, you didn't even talk about whatever. Yeah, M- Michael Douglas brought in an ant army that had evolved over thousands of years. And he mentioned it real matter of factly. He's like, oh, by the way, I have super advanced ant army that is fucking it's a hundred thousand times the size it was. And they're going to fucking save the day because I'm apparently the real ant man. And you're just a guy that just got his ass. beat. <laughs> you know, they did. That's one 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 of the problems I do have this movie is like some things were like a lot of the. Solutions in the movie were super convenient uh just like out of nowhere i mean they explained the that the super intelligent ant thing early in the film so i do feel like that they set that up early but it's just just like with the second portal opening up come on they made it seem like this portal was the only way once it's closed you're done that's how we you know we got to stop kang from getting through it because once it closes he's stuck down there and then they open another one up immediately. Same thing with the ant. Like, all is lost. Oh, wait, here comes Hank with his ant, his super intelligent ant army. Yeah. And, and you know, and Kang's not nearly as smart as a teenager. So, you know, that that's why she can do it and he couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I guess that's why. I, I love Jonathan Majors in this, though. I, I am excited to see whatever they do with him. Um, that guy just, like, can't do any wrong right now. I feel like he's the... He's the Michael B. Jordan of like five years ago. 
right? And Michael Michael B. Jordan is the Dwayne Johnson of uh, ten years, multiple ago. years before that, and then before that, Dwayne Johnson was the Mark Wahlberg. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got like five years till you reach saturation, so we got to get these movies cranking. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I, like everything I've seen, uh, Jonathan Majors in, I've loved. And I can't wait. Like, and next week we get Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors together in Creed Three, which, like, my even though I'm a huge MCU fan, that's that that Creed Three is probably my most anticipated film of this year, and I, I'm I'm like more excited than I feel like I should be about it, but. That's like all my hopes are on that. That and Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer is going to be great. Yeah, that does look good. Um, I did see a um, a review headline for that for Creed, and it said it's more Cape Fear than Rocky. I don't even know what that means. I think it's more um, suspense, like drama type shit, rather than Rocky, which sounds fucking great, honestly. Okay, yeah. I mean, you don't, you know, the the one thing that people I think start to dislike about the Rocky films like they're really formulaic they're all like kind of cheesy towards the end you got mandatory stuff in it right you've got the training montage you get the final epic fight the, the guy always gets beat to a pulp and then right at the last minute springs into action and went so yeah if they can make it a, a little more dramatic uh, a little less cheesy great and I'm a biggest Rocky fan on earth so I'm not dogging it in any way um, I love the worst of the Rocky films. So either way, I'd be happy with this movie, but it definitely feels like they're, they're going a different direction. Michael B. Jordan directed this one, so we get to see his directing chops. Um, they say that the, the fight choreography is a lot different in this one, too, and that it's pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm pumped for that. This is like... A, Ant-Man adjacent, right? Because of Jonathan Majors. Like, it's okay that we we're going on and on about the, the Rocky franchise at the end of this Quantumania review. Well, I'm pretty sure this is a variant in this movie, so it's connected. Ah! Yeah, did you ever see, um, did you see that uh, like, rendering that someone did of the, the Creed 3 poster, and they turned, uh, they turned Jonathan Majors into Kang and they turned Michael B into uh, Killmonger. Oh, no. And they're like, yeah, they were sitting in their opposite corners as those characters. Pretty cool. Anyway, definitely final have a, have thoughts. Post credit. Um, <laughs> that would be, that would be great. Um, I'd give it yeah, a, fin- uh, eh, I'd give it a Rob Sugar. <laughs> oh, a uh, 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 Bob Sugar? No, I'm I'm more uh, Bob's brother more Rob. Formal. No, I'm I'm more formal. It's 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 Robert Sugar. So he's oh. Rob Sugar to me. Oh, oh, I you know what I I forgot. I usually call him Robbie Shug. So I'm like, <laughs> it, it 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 felt off to me to say Robert. But anyway, <laughs> um, people don't know what we're talking about. Justin and I have a long lost podcast uh, called. What is it called? <laughs> ambassadors of Quan. indeed it is um where you know our rating system is based off jerry Maguire character so if you completely miss that um whatever you gotta be a jerry Maguire fan which we are diehard jerry Maguire fans uh but what is a bob sugar i don't even remember bob no bob sugar was like a terrible rating yeah I, you're giving this one a terrible rating it's yeah there's too many things we, that I just didn't like. There's too many parts of the story that just were lazy. So we've had some time. You have definitely had some time to think about this because when we came out of the film, we were eating Chipotle and you rated it a B. Yeah, but as I'm thinking about it, like each thing was a misstep. Each major part of that story, I mean, was too fucking convenient. And there wasn't a lot of setup. The only good part really was Jonathan Majors. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, I rated it a little higher just because because of Jonathan Majors. And that's the whole reason. That's all I had hopes for in this film was to give us a good introduction to this villain we're going to see a, a shit ton more of going forward. So I, it did that for me. I think you're right, though. Overall, the story was like 
I thought it was fun and zany and, and wacky as hell in the quantum realm, but maybe a little too much of a CGI film. Like, it was all CGI. All the backgrounds were CGI. We got very little real world at all. So that brings it down a little bit for me. I, not that it wasn't done well. It, it looked good other than uh, Darren. But I prefer a more grounded story generally. Um, but yeah, Jonathan Majors made it for me. So I don't know. It, it, it's middle of the pack. It's a C or B MCU film. It's heads and shoulders above uh, Thor, Love, and Thunder. I will tell you that. That movie gets worse the, like, you know, the, the more it exists. The longer I think about Thor, Love, and Thunder, I tried to rewatch it just for a second time, and I couldn't finish it. It just wasn't very good at all. So take that for what you will. Um, Middle of the road, middle of the road MCU film. Now, if you were rating it, let me just ask you this: If you were rating it as a uh, film in general, like take it out of the MCU, this is just a film. You're comparing it to all film. Pretty crappy. Um, yeah, it wasn't that good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if I would rate it the worst. Of the, I, I rewatched all the Ant Man films recently. I don't know if two or three is ranked higher for me. Kang, Kang definitely moves it up a little bit, like a few notches. I don't know if it overtakes uh, Ant Man and the Wasp because there were some some great stuff in that, and it was a much more grounded story, and it felt more Ant Man y. Like, it felt a lot more like the first film. This third film felt like a completely different thing. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, as much as I hate to say it, it probably is the worst of the Ant-Man films, story-wise. But I still enjoyed watching it. I'll watch it again. All right, I think we can wrap it up. We actually, we, we actually uh, only saw it once and somehow pulled off an hour-long podcast in it, even though we did delve into some uh, Creed 3 and, and whatnot to kind of stretch it out. I think we did a pretty good job covering most of it. Like I said, we probably missed some key stuff that somebody's going to point out, but whatever. We did our best. If I need to revisit it later, I am going through the MCU film by film right now on Patreon, so hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe when I get back to this film, Five years from now, I'll rewatch it and do another in depth review. But for now, this is your review for Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And Justin will be returning very soon uh, when we. What, what uh, were you coming on for? The first cap? Uh, we're going to do the remember. first Captain America film. I think that's no. what you. Oh, yeah, yeah who gets? So I've got to get through uh, Iron Man 2 and Thor. And then Justin will be back on the Patreon to review Captain America, the first Avenger. So, Justin, thank you so much for, for taking time out of your night. I know this is – I mean, you're the one that made it last minute. I, I was like, hey, man, when do you want to do this review? You're like, right now. Let's do it. So if people don't like it, it's your fault. Well, hey, now or never, man. That's all I got left for it. Yeah, well, I appreciate you doing it, man, I, especially um, doing it so quick. Like like I said, I I suggested it, and you're like, let's go. I delayed you by 20 minutes, so appreciate you as always. Can't wait to talk to you again. Thanks, man. All right, later. Later.